I have a very important message that I need to relate to my brothers and sisters today. If George Zimmerman wins this trial for the murder of Trayvon Martin, I need you to use your mind. Don't lose your mind. This whole thing was set in motion by none other than George Zimmerman himself, and we all know this. This murder has become an event for us because we as a people are at the point of being very tired. Our persecution spans back thousands of years. Here in this land we call America, our persecution has been going on for centuries. The powers that be are not interested in how we feel about anything. This man, George Zimmerman, is just one more link in a chain of men who sought the death of a black young man and knew that the system would be on his side. We are hated of all nations because of who we are, nothing more, nothing less. Don't allow our enemies to pull you into a fight that you can't win at this point. This enemy has been at work for a long time and they know who they are. I am not saying that anyone with white skin is an enemy. What I'm saying is directed at the racist mindset that dominates this country. America has slain black people for centuries and found themselves not guilty, just like the Bible said they would. They will continue to find themselves not guilty as long as they make the rules. Your anger and rage over the death of Trayvon Martin will not change this system. They will carry on until an appointed time. That's right, there is an appointed time because this trouble won't last always. Everyone who has wronged us will have to answer someday to the Most High. And that day will be soon, so just hold on a little while longer. Don't lose your mind or your life trying to fight a system that you can't win against. Just know this, that very soon our enemies will have to face the judgment of the Most High. They may feel some sort of victory right now, but that will be short-lived. They are not interested in hearing what you or I have to say on this matter. They don't care that Trayvon Martin is dead. His death to them is a victory. George Zimmerman has become some sort of hero to some of them, and there's nothing that we can say to them to cause them to see the events of that night fairly. Their minds can't comprehend that George followed this young man with a loaded weapon with a bullet already in the chamber. The facts have been thrown out the window. In their minds, Trayvon did not have a right to defend himself against George, who aggressively pursued him. George Zimmerman has been lying from the very beginning. From the very beginning, he's been lying. He must be Superman of something if he managed to get just two scrapes on the back of his head after supposedly having it pounded on the concrete 25 times. We all know he's lying through his teeth and that even his claim that Trayvon grabbed his weapon but managed not to get any fingerprints on it. Yes, we know he's lying. We have a right to be mad as hell at this point if he gets off with all the lies that he's told. But what will it accomplish if we lose our minds over this? The old slave massa mentality is alive and well in the USA. Show me your papers, Negro. You don't have a right to walk around anywhere without my permission. Black people, I don't want you to think for one minute that that mindset is gone. It's still here. These people have been in the business of lynching black people for centuries. And just because you don't see it printed in the paper the same way that it used to be printed, it's still there. Many of them miss the good old days where they could advertise their murderous lynchings as, as though it was some type of family entertainment. Now, instead of advertising blatantly and directly printing it in the paper that a nigger is going to be lynched tonight at 6 p.m. on 5th and Broadway in downtown USA, it now reads, a young black man shot two times by a white man for playing his music too loud. Or, a white neighbor shoots a black teenage girl in the face and claims that it was just some awful mistake. Or a white boss shoots his black employee in his living room 
while conducting a business meeting. So you see the lynching hasn't stopped and the papers haven't stopped printing it either. Now it's just sugar-coated and passed off as some unfortunate incident. These races like to deflect and talk about the black-on-black -black crime. And yes, it is a huge problem and it needs to stop. It is ignorant to kill each other over this stupid mess we hear in the news. But it is still used to deflect off of them for what they have been doing for centuries and continue to do. If you look at FBI statistics, white males commit most of the violent crimes in this country. But see, they don't want you to know that. They don't want you to talk about that because we're inundated with images of black people committing crimes in the media. And that's done, again, to deflect off of them the real culprits of the majority of the crime. These same people that commit these crimes and this violence against us, I want you to know this. For those of you who don't know, these people used to keep our body parts as souvenirs after killing us. So you got to understand that there's a mindset there that's not completely rational. They may not be doing that now, but they are keeping a mental tab on what the law will allow them to get away with. Trayvon didn't stand a chance when George set out after him. George can tell a million lies and the system will still support him and so will every racist person in this country who hates black people. Please don't put it in your mind that you can battle this out in the streets and win. Just stay in your houses and trust me on what I have to say. What we need to do at this point is turn our hearts towards the Most High and put on the strength of the Most High. O Zion, put on thy strength. Yah has said that vengeance is his. He will repay. The system of this country may find Zimmerman not guilty and he may go free, but in the end he will not be free. A not guilty verdict does not mean he is innocent. It simply means that they refuse to make him pay for the crimes that he's committed against a young black man. He and everyone who has supported him will have to face the Most High of Heaven and they will be judged of him. He sees their wicked hearts and will judge them accordingly. This life on earth is but a vapor, but the time they spend in eternity will be their time of reflection on the wickedness of their hearts and the condemnation of Yah that will overtake their very body and soul. It is common knowledge for those of us who do their research that blacks in America cannot expect justice on stolen property. The descendants of those who stole this property from the Native Americans are the lawmakers and the lawbreakers of today. So you see, don't expect justice in an unjust system. They make sure that their people are rewarded, promoted, or saluted for crimes against black people. Rodney King, Trayvon Martin, Jordan Davis, Ernest Hoskins, Ayanna Jones, and countless others have suffered or died at the hands of racist people who benefit from a system that was designed to help them maintain their privilege on a playing field that is unlevel. Know this, people. Trying to rise up in your own power against a wicked beast is a losing game. It's a losing battle. If you do it in the most high's way, you will see nothing but victory. Let the wicked celebrate as they always do when our people see death or destruction of the flesh. But hear these encouraging words from the Bible Apocrypha in the Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. But the souls of Yah's children are in the hands of Yah, and there shall no torment touch them. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die, and their departure is taken as misery. And they're going out from us to be utter destruction, but they are in peace. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For Yah have proven them and have found them worthy for himself. As gold and the furnace hath he tried them and received them as a burnt offering. And in the time of their visitation, they shall shine and run to and fro like sparks among the stubble. They will judge the nations and have dominion over the people. And Yah shall reign forever. Now I'm going to 
direct you to Baruch chapter 4, verse 6, then verse 24 through 35. And these are also in the Apocrypha. It says this, Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved Yah to wrath, ye were delivered unto your enemies. For ye provoked him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not unto Yah. So you see, when we were sold to all of these nations during the transatlantic slave trade, Yah was moved to anger and he delivered us into the hands of our enemy. But this is what he got to say about the enemy. Okay, those who took us captive. It says, like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they shortly see your salvation from Yah, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. My children, suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from Yah, for thine enemy hath persecuted thee. But shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shalt tread upon his neck. My delicate ones have gone through rough ways and were taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Be of comfort, O my children, and cry unto Yah, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. For as it was in your mind to go astray from Yah, so being returned, seek him ten times more. For he that hath brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. Take a good heart, O Jerusalem, for he that gave thee that name will comfort thee. Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoiced at thy fall. Miserable are the cities which thy children served. Miserable is she that received thy sons. For as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. For fire shall come upon her from the everlasting long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. I am going to leave you with these words. Fret not thyself because of evil doers and workers of iniquity, for they shall be soon cut off. There is no reasoning with the unreasonable. So just let them bask in their deception, and at the appointed time, they will have to answer for their wicked deeds. The punishment of the Most High of Heaven is far greater than anything you can accomplish. If George Zimmerman is acquitted, let Trayvon Martin rest in peace. Let these wicked people celebrate as they always have. Let them do what they do best which is hate us and accuse us of everything. The Bible says that Satan is an accuser of the brethren. So nothing is new here. If George is convicted, still don't celebrate too loudly because it changes nothing with the hateful mindset we see in this country. Wicked people wax worse and worse every day. Even their own FBI crime statistics data shows that white people commit more violent crime than all others combined. But we don't see this reflected in the media. The media highlights black crimes to deflect from the truth of the matter. They want everyone to fear black people when their own FBI statistics show that white people commit most of the crimes in this country. They have no sympathy for a dead black person, so don't expect it. What they are looking for is for black people to be overflowing with emotion over the heinous, senseless murder of Trayvon if George is acquitted, to give them an excuse to do more killing. It is in the nature of a racist to kill, steal, and destroy. My appeal to my people is unlike that of some of these church leaders. My appeal is that we really fall on our knees and wait to see the salvation of the Most High as he begins to judge this nation for what they have done unto the real true tribe of Judah, which is you and I. Trust me, they will not go unpunished for this brutal 400 year captivity they've had us in. Just like Moses relayed to Pharaoh, it is time to let my people go. Shalom.